Hey everyone, Ro here. Today, another instalment in our What If Primark Return topic, as we discuss what would happen if Rogal Dawn returned. General spoiler warning to begin, as the events we are discussing today are from across the Warhammer 40k universe, so you have been warned. But, with that said, let's just jump straight in. Okay, Rogal Dawn the Primarch of the Imperial Fists Legion, and the Praetorian of Terror. A Primarch for me that, honestly, I was never really the biggest fan of originally. I didn't particularly dislike him, but there was nothing really that drew me to him either. However, when he finally got his moments in the Heresy series, we really got to see the inner workings of this amazing character. Perhaps still one of my favourite scenes in all the Heresy series still to this date is his reunion with Vulcan upon Terra. No over-the-top Primarch against Primarch action, no villains and traitors to play off against, just two brothers reuniting in a moment of warmth amidst all the tragic circumstances. Simply beautifully written characters. And then from one extreme to the other, in his conflict against Alpharius, still one of the most absolute badass Primarch moments. Which is saying something in a heresy filled to the brim with them. However, as we know, after the culmination of the heresy, Dawn was to take the Emperor's interment upon the Golden Throne particularly hard, becoming racked with guilt for his own perceived failures. And this emotion drove him vengefully during the years of the Scouring, even so much as to come a hair's breadth from a secondary civil war as he argued with Gilliman over the Codex Astartes. But as history is known, Dawn was to relent at the last and lead his chapter until his ultimate disappearance, his final sighting during a boarding of a traitor Astartes fleet. And at this point in the lore, only his hand was recovered by his chapter. Obviously, you'd expect the future Scouring series will explore the disappearance further, so maybe one day we'll get some more definitive answers either way, maybe even a change to the expected outcome. However, regardless for now, the fact remains that Dawn does disappear, and his name entered into legend alongside his loyal brothers. But unfortunately for Rogal, he's very much in the same boat as Russ, in that we've had no hints or teases in regards to his possible return. And maybe even worse than Russ, we don't have any idea just where he could have gone. I know some class the remark by Vulcan during the War in the Beast as a sign he knows where Dawn is. But for me, it's nothing more than Vulcan trying to commend a loyal son of Dawn. He would have said the same to a son of Jagatai or Korax in my opinion. That doesn't mean he knows where they are. But again, that's just my opinion. Now, maybe a logical guess for the disappearance would it be tied to the Immaterium. And perhaps Dawn was either drawn into some form of warp portal or chose to enter it in pursuit of the enemy. So much like his brothers Jagatai and Russ, it could feel like very little time has passed if Dawn were to return. And speculating how and when this could transpire is unfortunately even more vague than trying to do it for Russ. So, let's say there's some major event against the forces of Chaos and the Traitor Legions, and Rogal Dawn himself emerges from a warp rift, being reunited with his sons. Or perhaps even is found imprisoned by the much-loathed Iron Warriors, and after being released by his sons, 
sets about decimating Perturabo's grand scheme. That would of course otherwise have been the end of the Imperium as we know it. Either way, the Praetorian of Terror is back, and he means business. Now first things first, Rogel would obviously assimilate the situation of the Imperium and the galaxy, learning everything and everything he could about the last 10,000 years of his absence. And in learning of his brother Gilliman's return, there would obviously be a desire to communicate with Rabute as quickly as possible. Now, deciding if he would want to return to Terra is a little trickier for me. If this was the dawn of the Great Crusade or pre-Siege Heresy, then maybe I'd say yes. Much like when Rabute returned to this unrecognisable Imperium, Rogel could perhaps feel the desire to see the throne world for himself, to stand before his father once more, particularly if he hasn't been within the Immaterium, and has very much felt every one of those 10,000 years he's been gone. However, assuming that's not the case, the Rogel that emerges in the aftermath of the Siege and Heresy, I feel is going to be an eternally changed one. And there's a good chance that in viewing what's become of the Imperium ever since the Emperor ascended the throne, it's really going to make Dawn feel more responsible than ever. He despised what he was forced to do to the Imperial Palace the glory of the Imperium that he was forced to rip down and cover in tides of fortifications. He will despise what he will come to see as his failure when finding the Emperor's broken form upon the vengeful spirit, and in then seeing the Imperium so far fallen from that golden dream, I can't help but feel he'll take all of that on his shoulders once again. So for me personally lately, I'm leaning more to no. He would not indulge his own feelings in returning to the throne world. As long as Terra still stood, and it was in no immediate danger, I do not think he would go. Now in reuniting with Rabute, I've said before and I'll say again, I really feel their relationship would undoubtedly be a good one. Yes, we're going to see arguments and disagreements between the two during the scouring, but ultimately that conflict is avoided, and Rogel himself always believed that Gilliman was the best choice for Lord Commander, even over himself. Rabute would be elated to have his long desire of a brother once more alive and by his side. Possibly even more so with it being Rogel, one who shares so many similar traits to himself, and one that you would assume he could have completely rational conversations with, specifically in regards to strategic overview. We could make a fair assumption that Dawn isn't as likely to charge off and do his own thing unexpectedly, such as a Jagatai or Lehman Russ could do. Now, that's not saying Dawn wouldn't disagree with Rabute, but you'd just expect him to finish the conversation and explain why, rather than just saying, you do your thing and I'll do mine. Now, assuming Dawn wasn't informed of the Primaris project back in the day, I think he would be very surprised by these new creations. However, I don't think he'd have much of a problem with them either. Yes, he may consider it a blasphemy on the Emperor's own work, but in truth, Gilliman thinks this privately too. So much like Gilliman, I think Rogel would consider it a necessary one, or at the very least a worthy one. The Imperial Fist bloodline doesn't have any major genetic traits, such as the sons of Sanguinius or Rus. At the end of the day, there was nothing for Belisarius to tamper with in Dawn's bloodline. So regardless of whether they're firstborn or primaris, the sons of Dawn are just the sons of Dawn. Let's not get started with the whole soul drinker stuff. 
So I think at the end of the day, Rogel will simply see the obvious benefits that the Primaris bring. And on that note, I also do not believe that Rogel would enact the Last Wall Protocol. He might well consider it given the state of the galaxy, but given that Terra is largely safe for the moment, I think he'd keep it as the last line of defence plan that it was intended for. Now that doesn't mean he wouldn't obviously be issuing orders to his successor chapters, much like Rabute, I just don't think it would be a literal reformation of his legion. So overall, he's PO'd with the state of the Imperium, he's okay with the Primaris, and he's not enacting the Last Wall Protocol. So just what would Rogal Dawn do? Well, this is dependent on two things for me. Firstly, Rabute's undoubted theoretical plan of his return, and secondly, Dawn's desire for vengeance. Gilliman, as we spoke about for Russ, would definitely have one of his theoretical plans in mind for the return of each one of his brothers. Even if he didn't think it was a remote possibility, this is Gilliman we're talking about. He has a theoretical plan for everything. I mean, he's probably got one for Horus bursting forth from the Eye of Terror. Okay, maybe not that one, but you get the point. Now, what they could be is your guess as good as mine. But I think a fair guess would be to say it could be the perfect opportunity to bring some hope to the Imperium Nihilus. The people of the Imperium lost across the Great Rift. And I wouldn't be surprised if Gilliman suggested that Dawn defend the Imperium Sanctus, the more stable southern half, and he himself lead the next Indomitus Crusade across it. On the surface, a logical plan, given his brother's excellence for defence, and beneath the surface, perhaps an easier option for a brother still adjusting to the new galaxy around him. However, that's one I absolutely would expect Rogel to refuse. This would be one situation I would see him telling Rabute it will be him that will be leading the crusade across the rift. No discussion about it. And that's a manner of events I feel would suit regardless of the situation they find themselves in. Regardless of whatever plan Gilliman may suggest. I just don't see Dawn being content to sit back and fortify as you might expect. As I said, this is a Dawn that's very much changed, and for me, a Rogal Dawn that would be very much intent on vengeance. He wouldn't strike out on his own, a la maybe a Jagatai or Russ. He would still be very much in line with the wider Imperium and Gilliman's overall strategy, but he would insist on being the one to lead whatever attack or crusade Gilliman would suggest. He may phrase it as, this is what I'm going to do, but that would be the difference. He would communicate and work with Rabute. Gilliman wouldn't just come downstairs one day to find a note on the fridge, saying popped over the rift to reclaim Imperium Nihilus, like he might do from Jagatai. And really, I think that sums up the return of Rogel best. As angry and fueled for striking back as he would be, he's by far and away one of the more suitable and stable brothers for Gilliman to have back. And at least for this moment in time, there's no one thing you can say that Dawn's going to simply disregard Gilliman's voice to do. Such as Lehman Russ heading for Prospero, for example, you know he's going to go there as soon as he finds out regardless of Gilliman. At the end of the day, yes, the only person any Primarch will truly listen to is their father, the Emperor. Even if Rabute is the Lord Commander. But the key thing about Rogal is that he will more than likely always be there to at least have the conversation about it. 
and he is the great counterpart for Gilliman to talk strategy with. Now, the elephant in the room, the possible revelation of Gilliman's unremembered empire, could this throw a spanner in the works, or would Dawn not be overly fussed? Well, honestly, I can see both. Firstly, let's get it out the way straight away. Rogel's not going to be bothered at all by Gilliman's rebuilding of the Ultramar Empire under Astartes' control. At least I really don't think so. He may well recognise the apprehension Rabute's actions since his return have caused, and maybe give a word of caution to his brother. But by and large, I think he'll be more or less on the same wavelength. However, possibly finding out the knowledge that while he was fortifying Terra, Gilliman was proclaiming a new Imperium instead. Now that could be a very big problem. As we said earlier, Rogel is torn up with guilt over the Emperor's fate. If he were to look at it in the way that Gilliman didn't arrive in time, because he was busy declaring his own Imperium, that Gilliman and his Ultramarines could have been on Terra the entire time, well, that could cause a major, major rift between the two. Rogel gave everything he possibly could just to buy time for Gilliman's arrival, knowing that it was never going to be enough and that Gilliman could have been there the entire time. Even if that's not necessarily the reality with the Ruin Storm, man, that's going to be a problem. In that situation, I do think it would come to blows. Maybe not chainsaws at dawn here, but I could definitely see punches being thrown. Gilliman no doubt declaring if only he had known Terra still stood, and Rogel may be seeing an outlet for his own guilt and grief. The saving grace again in this revelation to me is the fact that Sanguinius did make it to Terra, that he and his legion stood tall against the overwhelming odds, and he gave the ultimate sacrifice. The lion, Gilliman and he decided if only one of them could make it through to Terra, then it was to be the angel. So yes, the brothers could possibly argue. They could possibly fight. Only again for the unifying force between the Primarchs, after 10,000 years, to still be their love for Sanguinius. Somehow or another, it would come down to the fact of Gilliman mentioning that Sanguinius did make it, and the mere mention and reflection of that would simply call any argument between the two. So yes, maybe the unremembered Empire revelation could cause possible rise to some uncomfortable truths, and yes, some possible discord between the two brothers again. But it would not lead to anything more. And if Rogel were to return to the Imperium of Man, I have no doubt the forces of chaos would be fearing the wrath of the Praetorian once more. But as always guys, what do you think? How do you think things would go down if Rogel Dawn returned to the Imperium? Do you think he would enact the Last War Protocol? Do you think him and Rabute would largely see eye to eye? And how do you think he would feel if the revelation of the Unremembered Empire came to bear? Would he see the logic behind it? Or would he only see that Gilliman was not racing for terror? As always guys, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.